guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. If you're new here, I am on a weight loss journey to lose 200 pounds. I love going on an adventure. And with that, I've realized that my weight is holding me back from doing things that I love to do, which include things like skydiving and zip lining. And I mean, there's literally, I literally have a list of like a hundred things I want to do that I can't do because of my weight. So I love sharing my travel adventures and then my weight loss journey. Today, we are going to talk about how the last month went as far as my weight loss journey goes and look forward to the next month. It's officially January 1st, February 1st. It's officially February 1st. And we gotta talk about what happened last month and what I'm gonna do about it this month. So if you watched my video last month at the beginning of January or the middle of January, I shared that I'd made some goals for January. I was planning on working out 16 times or four times a week throughout the month. I worked out 14 times. So I didn't hit the 16 mark, but I hit 14, which is almost half the month, which is incredible. So, I mean, if we're gonna rate that, I would give myself probably nine out of 10 on that one. I'm very happy. I was very busy through January with work. So with daylight savings time and the fact that it gets dark at six o'clock, there weren't days where I wasn't able to go outside every single day and run. So there were days that I had to do like indoor workouts and stuff like that, but I still got my workouts in. So 14 days, not bad, right? Another one of my goals for last month was I planned on staying away from alcohol, basically doing dry January, corn and potatoes. Now, all of those things are covered basically by just doing keto essentially. So I was, I was pretty much okay, but I specifically wanted to stay away from them for my psoriasis. It's been going a little haywire recently and I didn't have any potatoes last month, which is great. I did have some corn chips last month though. So, I mean, there was one day where I kind of slipped up, but I didn't have any alcohol last month. And I mean, if <laughs> I read this meme the other day, it's like, if you have to have dry January, doesn't that mean you have a problem if you can't stay away from alcohol for the rest of the month or the rest of the year? As much alcohol and potatoes and corn that I can stay away from, the better I am because my body does not appreciate it and it shows signs all over. I was filming yesterday, right? And both my cameras, the hard drives, the, the SD cards are full. And then for some reason, my phone was full too. So <laughs> I didn't get to finish filming this video yesterday. As far as my third goal for January, I... I was supposed to drink a gallon of water every single day. Well, that is hard. That is so hard. I don't even think that I drank, I don't even think that I drank maybe a gallon of water more than 10, 10 days in the month. It, it's just impossible. Now, I will say every single day I drink more than half of a gallon. So it's a place that I need to improve upon. I would say that I probably got like a six out of 10 if I were to grade myself on that one but it's just, it's hard to drink a gallon of water every day. So that has room for improvement. I am currently about to walk into Whole Foods and get myself a salad from their salad bar. It's like the one place that actually has a salad bar still open, but it's super COVID safe because like they don't let you bring anything into like the salad bar area and it's blocked off and you have to wear gloves. So I'm gonna go get a salad bar for lunch salad bar. I'm gonna go get a salad from a salad bar for lunch. My fourth goal last month was to eat 500 calories less than my TDEE last month or my total daily energy expenditure. So I was trying to do a 500 calorie deficit and I was trying to keep myself between a 500 calorie deficit and 1600. So it's between about 1600 and 2100 calories. I'm here to say that I have ate around 1600 calories almost every single day in January. I had a few days where I was eating 1900 or 2000, but I still stayed under my 500 calorie deficit. So I'm super proud of myself. So you think, okay, this girl that I'm looking, that I'm watching for a whole month, she ate at least at a 500 calorie deficit, at least. So 500 calories, 30 days, she should have lost at least four pounds, right? Right? A car just pulled in next to me, but I'm gonna still keep filming. No, unfortunately, um, 
Unfortunately, I did not lose any weight last month. And I'm really annoyed about it. And I'm really like, I have lost 59 pounds since June 1st of last year. I am very proud of that. Very proud. So proud. But it's a little frustrating when you're doing all of these good things, you're working out more than you ever have in your entire life, you're eating better than you have in your entire life for probably the longest, I mean, since literally being an adult, I think this is the longest stretch of time I have really tried losing weight. And to not see the scale change, and like, it just, you know, it fluctuated around my period, but like, truthfully, I haven't seen, I haven't seen 59.5 pounds weight loss. I haven't seen 60 pounds of weight loss. 59, I've seen 57, I've seen 58, I've seen 59. But I cannot seem to get over 59 pounds of weight loss. And I, I don't know what's going on. I thought I would have lost like four pounds last month. You know, I think four pounds is reasonable if, if, if I'm, if I have a 500 calorie deficit and I'm eating better than a 500 calorie deficit. So I am a little frustrated, but I also remind myself about how far I've come and the fact that I haven't been this low in weight since I don't even know when, like literally if you look at my fitness pal, every time I've like documented or tried losing weight, I've never been this low before. I, in like the last nine years, I've never been this low. So I am proud, but also a little frustrated. I'm not gonna lie about that. So my January goals, I did pretty good. I'm gonna give myself a 10 out of 10, by the way, on the calories that I ate last month, because there wasn't a day that I had, that I broke my 500 calorie deficit. If it wasn't a 500 calorie deficit, it was 600 or 700, 800, you know, like when you weigh so much, your total daily energy, energy expenditure is so high. It's, if you're actually paying attention to all the calories you put in your body and you're not just like randomly eating like I used to before trying to lose weight, it's really a lot harder to consume that because you're, you're being present and like being thoughtful about the food that you eat and how much of it you're putting in your mouth and i'm weighing out my sauces i'm using my scale i'm making sure that like what i'm eating is what is going in the app so it is a little frustrating i am going to carry that same caloric goal into this month i'm still gonna keep a 500 calorie deficit if not more my goal is to eat 1500 or 1600 calories every day. If I eat 1575, I'm not gonna like be mad that I didn't hit, hit 1600. But that gives me a range. And I'm gonna do that for February because keeping that range in January did help. And if you're watching this and you've been through a stall like this and you have some sort of uh, suggestion, I am open to suggestions because it's been like six weeks and it's a little frustrating. Maybe seven weeks at this point. I'm actually, speaking of suggestions, I am cycling things out of my diet right now. I decided to do pescatarian keto this week. So I had that baked feta pasta that you see everybody making, which was pretty good. I made fish tacos this week on low carb tortillas. I made Tuscan salmon. I made a quiche with almond flour crust, which was super delicious. So I've been cooking quite a bit, which has been good, but I like cycled out like red meat and chicken. And I think I'm gonna try vegetarian keto. And I'm not necessarily like staying pescatarian or staying vegetarian. I'm just trying to see if like, there's something that I'm eating that's causing me not to lose weight. And January did I'm not go as planned. I'm say that there haven't been days in a row where I've just wanted to quit because it's just so much easier. But I read this quote the other day that made me laugh. It made me laugh, but also it's true. It's, it says, showering or bathing 
isn't permanent. You gotta do it every day. Motivation is kind of the same thing. You can't motivate yourself once and then you're just automatically motivated forever. It's just, it's not how motivation works. You literally have to do it every day. You have to bathe every day. So you have to motivate yourself every day. And as silly as that sounds, it is something that every day I remind myself about. So my goals for February, I am going to attempt to hit three fourths of a gallon every single day this month. I think if I can't do a gallon for a month, why am I going to continue that goal for a whole other month? And really put my best foot forward and try to hit it this month. So three fourths of a gallon of water every single day. I just wanted to take a moment and remind you to subscribe if you haven't already. I noticed that a very large percentage of people that watch my videos aren't subscribed yet. So if you subscribe, you'll be able to keep up with me and follow along when I post the next video. My phone died while I was out running. So I couldn't finish my video while I was out running. <laughs> oh, from one disaster to another trying to finish this video. I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. I, I've already set February goals and I'm already doing the damn thing. I've got my water here. So one of these is half, is 32 ounces. So if I drink three of these every single day, then that is half, then that is three fourths of a gallon of water. So I found myself a good water bottle and I'm just leaving it here by my desk because I do work every day and so far so good. So three fourths of a gallon is a lot more manageable for me right now than a whole gallon is. And I really want to do a whole gallon. Um, I really want to do a whole gallon, but it's just hard. Working out, I am going to try to do 16 workouts this month. I'm already four workouts in and we are sitting on the six. So progress so far. I think that once I successfully do 16 in a month, I'm going to try to do 17 in a month because I think like I just need to keep, I think working out helps me a lot. I know I read a fact that it's 80% diet and 20% working out. So I'm going to put in my 20% working out again every month. It, it helps helps me like not, <clears throat> the walking just doesn't help me like physically, it also helps me mentally because it lets me disconnect from everything else going on in the world and just like listen to music and like run out my feelings or run out my frustrations, run out, you know, the fact that the scale won't move. And I understand why I quit after four or five months in the past because I get to this point where I get stuck on this plateau and my body doesn't want to lose any more weight and I don't keep grinding past and that's been my issue in the past and I'm trying not to have that same same thing this this time around so I'm just dedicating myself every day every day that I wake up I remind myself that I am doing something very difficult and committing yourself to completely changing your life your what you put in your body how you record it what you think about when you haven't I haven't. When you didn't think about like how many calories is in a meal previously ever, and then you have to do that every single day, it is stressful, overwhelming, exhausting. So I understand where the feelings of like wanting to quit are coming from, but at the same time, I like wake up and I'm like, well, no, you can't go. I mean, these, okay, this is gonna sound like, I feel like a broken record, but it's like, you're still shopping in the plus size section you're still not able to wear clothes that match your friends when you are able to go back to music festivals again. You still have problems breathing. Like, okay, let's let's just, let's skip the skydiving and the zip lining for a second. Even though, you know, when I hit 270, I want to go zip lining in Ocala, Florida, just down the road. Cause it, it popped up on my For You page the other day. This girl was talking about how it was like a wonderful place to go zip lining at this old quarry. And I'm like, I want to go. I know about that place. And everybody in the comments was like, we don't know about that place. Like, I'm like, I know about that place. I can't go to that place. It's just like another reminder of like things I can't do because of my weight. So when I have those reminders, I feel more dedicated, but you know, I think if we're gonna be really honest, a daily reminder is when I post TikTok videos or even YouTube videos. If I'm out walking around or doing anything other than sitting down, 
you hear me breathing and I cut those portions out because I'm self-conscious about that. And I'm breathing heavy because my body is carrying around a whole bunch of extra weight. So small things, I may not hear it, but small things with me just like going from here to the kitchen and like walking around the house, I breathe heavy. So if I'm walking and talking and videoing it, I hear myself breathing heavy. And it's not something you notice. Like it's not something like if you weren't recording yourself, like because a lot of people don't enjoy like recording their day to, acti day, -to day activities. Not everybody goes on a weight loss journey and then decides to post it online. So maybe you don't notice it, but I started posting TikTok videos and it's normal to breathe heavy when you're out running or like exerting yourself. It is not normal to breathe heavy when you're just walking around the house. That is not normal. And that scares me when I hear that. And I am so grateful that like things that I've noticed that have gone away is like, I used to have back pain and foot pain in the morning when I got out of bed, when I was at my heaviest and I don't want to deal with those things anymore. Like it's not just, hey, I want to be under 200 pounds so that I can go jump out of airplanes. It's, hey, I want to not be out of breath going to the freaking kitchen. And it's not pretty and it's not fun and I enjoy fun, but we're here and we're setting goals for this month. So I'm just about to finish up my week of pescatarian keto. Haven't lost any new weight, still s sitting at 59 pounds lost. And I'm gonna attempt at least one week, if not two weeks of dairy-free keto to see if maybe that helps. I would love suggestions if you have any. Other than that, I'm just gonna keep ketoing and, what is it, keep on and keep ketoing? Is it keep calm and keto on? I hate this phrase, but it took me years to put the weight on. It's gonna take me years to get it all off. Just like I expected in eight months, I'd see at least 80 pounds lost. And I was talking to my mom about it and she was thinking the same thing. It's, it's weird how I've been like stuck at this little spot for a while. I think for my mental health, I'm going to pay way more attention to non-scale victories this month than I am the scale. I'm not looking at the scale as often as I used to, but when I very first started this, I didn't pay attention to measurements. I didn't measure myself and I wish I had, but today I'm actually going to take on measurements so that when I do my check-in for next month, I can look at the two months back to back and compare and make sure that like, like I'm not going crazy. And I know I'm not going crazy. Like I'm wearing clothes that are a different size than what I used to wear. I'm fitting into clothes that I haven't like touched in a long time. <sighs> it's just like to not See the number change on the scale kind of sucks, but. So next month when I do my check-in, I'll have more than just pictures and the scale to make comparisons. I'll actually have measurements too. I got myself a fancy measuring tape off Amazon so that I can do my measurements and keep track of them from here on out because I think that will help me as well. And then just like other non-scale victories, like doing healthy things. And I know the non-scale victory is like putting on clothes that I've never worn before and wearing sizes that I've never worn. And I'm very excited about those things. I just would love if the scale would move, even if it was just 0.1 pounds, you know? Is my scale broken? So that's how we're doing after one month into 2021. I hope you are doing better than I am. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. And if you're stuck like me, don't give up. Even though I want to give up sometimes and it feels crazy. Like I feel crazy getting on the scale and being like, well, no, I, I've been eating right. Like I feel a little crazy sometimes because I'm like, well, no, I pay attention to every th single thing that's going in my body. I know how much exercise I'm getting. <laughs> why, why isn't this working? So if you feel a little crazy, know that I feel a little crazy too. And I feel crazy posting updates. It's like, what do I have to update people on? I did a month of trying to lose weight and no weight came off. So. If you feel a little crazy watching this video and wondering why is she posting an update when she hasn't lost anything, know that I feel a little crazy posting an update.